Hi, Jamie here. I just wanted to make a quick video to document and share an experience I had recently. Actually, it was back in September. <laughs> so, um, I, when I had this experience in this lucid dream, it was just a different kind of level of lucidity, and I knew I wanted to get it on the channel to keep record of it. <laughs> so, the experience started, I tracked myself and I was lucid for probably about an hour. Um, I didn't have a strong intention going into the experience, so I had a lot of false awakening. I find that I get, I have false awakenings a lot if I don't have that strong intention of what I want. Um, so by the fourth or fifth false awakening, I was, I, I had woken up at my, the house that I grew up in. And I remember, um, I was trying to create like energy balls with my hands because I really couldn't think of what else to do, which is crazy. But I'm not that I'm creating energy balls, but I can't think of what to do. That's crazy. But um, so I was really getting successful at them and they were becoming blue and like they were orbs. And so then I would just kind of throw them and experiment with what they were doing. Um, but then I slipped back in and I had another false awakening. And I'll just read what I wrote and kind of tell you about the beginning of the experience. So and I wrote this one almost got me. But I stopped and I really questioned. It was subtle. But because I took that breath and paused, I caught it. And I thought to myself, no, I'm not fully awake yet. I can still do stuff. Um, and because I didn't have a huge intention going in, and then I actually wrote my journal. That's an interesting word, intention. Intention. I, I find myself looking at words so much differently after working with a lot of Jeremy Carter's work. It's pretty interesting. So I went to one of my go-to things, which has been for years and years and years. One of my go-tos is to just fly to space. So I ran outside, I looked up at the night sky, and I saw clouds and stars, and I just said out loud and yelled, take me to the stars, take me to the stars. And at this point, I just built up a lot of confidence. Um, I even mentioned as I started to kind of go up out loud, I said, I hope I don't just end up in blackness like I usually do. <laughs> so many times I go to space and it's just like blackness and there's nothing to focus on and then I'll lose the connection. So I really hoped that when I, when I went in that I didn't have that happen. And that's when what happened was the cloud cover in the sky moved away and in front of me was a giant head. <laughs> it was made of stone and if I'm like this little person like this, it was the size of like multiple buildings. It was a huge giant head and it had um, like a band around his top part of his head with some things like this kind of on the side, little blocks, almost like what you'd think like a wartime helmet might be, I guess. Um, and it was incredibly intense and very scary to just be like oh whoa and, then, and so I, I started falling because I was so scared <laughs> and I said um but I really thought no I'm not I'm not gonna give up I just had this like confidence in me and I just thought you know what I'm not gonna be scared this is definitely another level of realness this is um something outside of myself very clearly so I flew back up with a lot of confidence and I really faced the giant head <laughs> um and I wrote, it's really hard to express the realness of him. He was clearly outside of myself. I use that expression a lot, outside of myself. It's just very clear that some things are outside of ourselves. So he spoke in this loud, booming voice. And um, somehow I knew instinctively that he was a gateway to somewhere that I wanted to go. And I would have to travel through his mouth to get there. I just knew this. Um, and he, he was not happy with me. <laughs> he said a lot of things, actually, but I only recall the end of our conversation. He said, I remember, well, I remember the beginning. He said, you again, you again. And um, you tried this exactly 65 years and 38 days ago, and it didn't work then, and it didn't end well for you. And at that moment when he reminded me of this other time that I had tried to get through his mouth into this other realm portal, I remembered, I had a very vivid memory of that. And myself, seeing myself at the bottom of a pit 
kind of dusting myself off, like really dejected and thinking, oh, that didn't really go well. I didn't, I wasn't successful. Um, and I said, I just said, who are you? And he replied, I am Loki. Now I know there's a Loki. I know about Loki and I know about the Norse mythology, which I dream about a lot, honestly. I dream about a lot. I have no idea what the connection with me is. I'm drawn to parts of it, like a lot, some parts not. But anyways, he said, but I didn't know there was a god Logi um, until I looked it up and he's a very kind of obscure figure. But he said, I'm, I, I am Logi of Mil Milfgar, Milfgar, which I know sounds like a lot like Milfgar, like a Norse kind of thing. But he said, you just go somewhere else. And well, I guard the planet Romulus. <laughs> um... And then at that moment, he's, he, he was like, it was pretty much, I knew I wasn't going to get into his mouth. I wasn't going to be successful the second time. <laughs> so he showed me a vision of his planet, Romulus, and the people there. And I saw very clearly a building with kind of an open air area. So there's no glass or anything it was just very open but a building where it would start narrow at the top and it gets wider at the bottom and there were people in there at the different levels and they were all wearing robes um and they were they were, they were kind of maybe sitting down or talking but all the robes sort of matched but they had maybe just different colors here and there um and that was <laughs> that was Romulus the planet that he was he was guarding so there's that. I just really wanted to get that one documented. I just thought it was so interesting. If you have any thoughts about that, I would be so interested to hear what you have to say about that. Um, I've looking back, I just finished, it's always nice to just finish a journal. This journal I started in January and I finished in September. Um, and I counted that I've been lucid, um, 12 times. So, Hey, <laughs> I'll take it, um, and a lot of interesting content, to be honest with you. This is a separate journal to my vision work that I've been doing. This is just my dreams and my lucid dreams together. Um, but I'll show you, like, I get if I get lucid, I write the word lucid, and then I'll maybe draw kind of what I saw. This one was really interesting. <laughs> I saw a gold hand spinning. So anyways, that's that. I hope that you found that interesting. And like I said, if you have any thoughts about what that might be about or just any thoughts in general, I always love to hear them. So thank you so much for watching and talk to you later.